everyone, I'm Yana Smakula and welcome back to My Favorite Things YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful feminine birthday card and will teach you how you can color with alcohol markers on colored cardstock for a seamless yet slightly dimensional look. Now that we are past the holiday season and all of the Christmas cards have been made and hopefully posted, it's time to start working on something else. Birthday cards, perhaps. We're all used to coloring with alcohol markers, and I'm using Copic markers in this video, on white cardstock. But you can, in fact, color with Copics and other colors of cardstock, as long as it's fairly light in color. I love to use colored cardstock on my handmade cards, and in my previous video for My Favorite Things, I shared how I color images on colored cardstock with the help of colored pencils. Now, I don't always have the time it takes to color with my colored pencils, as, to me, Coloring with pencils is much more time consuming than coloring with Copic markers. So for this video, I decided I would go wild and try to color with Copics on light pink paper. Here, I've already started working on my card by heat embossing a sentiment that reads you're strong, brave and beautiful in light embossing powder on light pink paper. I stamped it in the center of my panel, added white embossing powder, I did all the usual things that you would do to heat emboss, and then I heat set it with my heat tool to melt the powder. I'm going to set this aside for now, we won't be needing it until the end of the video. Now I mentioned I'm making a feminine card, hence the light pink color and hence the flowers. If you're not a fan of pink, you can go with other colors. Now the key here is to make sure to pick a light enough color of cardstock to still be able to color over it using your alcohol markers. Here I'm stamping several flower images from the Brilliant Blooms set, and by the way, all of the supplies I'm using today are listed in the video description or in the blog post associated with it. I have one flower facing sideways and one large bloom. Now the large bloom is actually too large for the card that I have in mind. So my plan is to only use the inner section of that flower to have a slightly smaller bloom on my card. I will be needing three flowers in total for this card, so I'm making sure to stamp enough here. I'm also using an alcohol marker-friendly ink to make sure that these stamped images are not going to bleed when I start coloring them. Now here I picked pink cardstock as I wanted to color my flowers using pink markers. And I didn't want to mess around with different colors too much as that might have resulted in having muddy colors on my project. So here I picked a light pink cardstock for my base that also resembled closely the lightest marker color that I was planning to use to color my flowers. I went with my favorite color combination which is RV09, RV14 and RV13. I also tried a lighter variation of this combo, skipping the darkest RV09 and adding the lightest RV11 color. I'm definitely no pro when it comes to coloring with Copic markers, but what I am is a person who loves to experiment. So while my coloring will never be the most sophisticated out there, I do try to find a new thing to try every time I color. So here I've colored one of the flowers and I'm coloring that inner section of the other flower, the large flower that I plan to cut out. Anytime you want to use a floral image in your card, but the flowers seem too big, see if there's an inner layer or an inner section that you can cut out and use. It's a nice trick that lets you stretch the use of your stamps. I went ahead and die cut the sideways flower using a coordinating die and I cut the other flower using my scissors. Since that was an inner portion of a bigger flower, I couldn't really use a coordinating die for it and I cut it out right up to the edge of the stamped line. Next I'm stamping leaf images on the same light pink cardstock and you're probably thinking that I've lost my mind and that having pink leaves is not the best idea. But these are not going to be pink. I tested coloring on pink cardstock using green markers and the green wasn't affected much, so I'm going to color these using my markers green. You're probably thinking, why not use white paper for all of these die cuts right away? And you can by all means use white paper here, but if you do, your die cuts will have a white outline to them. Now there's nothing wrong with it, but I didn't want mine to have a white outline. I wanted them to seamlessly blend with the background, hence the use of pink cardstock. Now these die cuts, once finished, will look like as if they are part of the background, 
even though they are a separate layer. You could also have masked and stamped all of the images and image clusters on the background directly around the sentiment, but I am personally not one to do much masking. And if I can skip it and avoid masking my images, I will. I used G99, G94, and YG03 colors to color the leaves, and you can see that this pink base did not affect the colors much. Now, once my coloring was done, I die cut those out using a coordinating die. Now that we have all of the parts and pieces ready, we can start working on the background and assembling the card. Lately, I've been loving diagonal stripe backgrounds on my cards, and I thought I would make one for this card as well. You can use a background stamp to stamp a background like this, but if you don't have a stamp, you can draw a background using the chisel nib of your Copic marker. Here I'm using the lid of my stamp platform as a surface to create the background on. It's plastic and that means I can easily clean it later. You certainly don't want to do this on your rubber mat as that will stain it. You can use your glass mat, however. So I've taped a piece of cardstock at an angle and I'm using my ruler and the chisel nib of my marker, this is RV09, to add diagonal lines. I just go over each line two or three times to have an even ink coverage. Now I've adhered the diagonal background onto the card base, it's an A2 card, and adhered the pink panel on top. Now I did trim it to four by five and a quarter inches and here I've positioned the flowers over it. The way I place the flowers, they overlap the sentiment slightly. To still be able to read the sentiment, I decided I would heat emboss these covered sentiment parts over the floral images in same white embossing powder for a seamless look. So I quickly did that. And next I used glue for some of the images and foam adhesive for other images to adhere everything in place. Now, because the images had a pink outline to them and not white, if they were done on white paper, they created one seamless looking card front. I also decided I would heat emboss happy birthday sentiment in white embossing powder at the bottom section of my card. Originally, I wanted to stamp it on the inside of my project, but changed my mind to the front later. To finish it off, I used my white pen and colored the flower center dots white. This helped the flowers pop and really come to life. I hope you'll give this idea a try. If you do, please share online and tag us on social media. We always love seeing what you guys are making. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.